When disaster strikes, she strikes back as a mobile emergency evacuation response unit capable of entering dangerous and inhabitable environments. Here's your look at the new Diamond Select Pacific Rim Uprising Valor Omega. Valor Omega proudly wears the distinction of courage and bravery in her name like a badge of honor. She's equipped with dual-wielding cannons that erupt a mammoth barrage of shells, the equivalent of a 21 cannon firing line. As the guns are attached to her forearms, her dual salvos are lovingly referred to as a 21-gun salute. Anybody want to guess what we're going to do first? Yes, Heckler in the back of the audience. Heckler replies back, you're going to measure off the figure? <laughs> we are going to measure off the figure. You're so clever. You guys know what we always do on this channel. First thing we're going to do is measure off how tall Valor Omega stands. I don't know why, for some reason, I find that to be a tongue twister. Valor Omega stands at a very impressive 7.5 inches in height, which works out in centimeters. Let me go ahead and do that. Heckler's in the back. 19.2, about 20 centimeters tall. Next, they yell for size comparisons. So, to the hecklers yelling for size comparisons. You don't have to yell, by the way. I can. I have good ears. For size comparisons, there you go. Uh, Valor Omega, the figure that we're going to be looking at, is on your right. Probably already know that. And then to your left is November Ajax, the figure that we just looked at, and so far my personal favorite of the sets, and actually my personal favorite so far. One of my personal favorites, I don't want to diminish the value of the other ones, but one of my personal favorites of the Jaegers that Diamond Select has released. Quick and expensive editing later. Doesn't cost that much. Uh, the accessories to come included with Valor Omega, there's not many of them. There's just closed fists. Ironically enough, we also kind of, well, I feel like we've already done this, haven't we? Yes. November Ajax also sported a pair of closed fists as its defaulted accessories. It's unfortunately the only thing that these figures come included with. To the credit of Valor Omega, at the very least, she does come included with some much-needed firepower Something, unfortunately, that November Ajax didn't possess. But there are your closed fists. Some nice, slight silvering airbrushing or dry brushing that they've added to the tops, the top areas, kind of the padded areas of what almost looks to be like fighting gloves, even though we know it's not. Get a good quick look at that. I could certainly spend the next 25 minutes just showing this. Somebody's just going to comment filling up down below everybody's going like well i can't believe this I, I i can't believe this guy spent 17 minutes i docked it 17 minutes 47 seconds with the fists on the screen is anybody else seeing this somebody else down below says yes i see i saw that too i was wondering if it was just me you guys are the best uh to change out the hands by the way although it, to be fair, though, I, I think the hands that are currently in the sockets are actually pretty good. Nonetheless, nonetheless, I'm going to take the hand out of the socket, which is not, unfortunately, the easiest of things to accomplish. And uh, let me just try it on the other hand here. On the other hand, the problem is you can't get your finger. You can't get your finger in between. You see what's happening here? This is a dire, dire state. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, there we go. Just to show you, I wasn't gonna abandon, I wasn't gonna abandon doing it. Somebody's gonna like, watch, watch this guy's, he's just gonna give up. He's gonna say, ah, ah, it, you can do it. No, 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 I push forward, my friends. You can see that you can change it out to the closed fist. I guess the closed fists are good if you have the one arm up, kind of simulating, simulating that it's firing off its cannons, while the other one could be just this gripping, kind of, Dramatic hand is always like the way I best describe these as kind of little dramatic hands. Oh my god, can you believe he's doing it again? I docked it two minutes 35 seconds. The guy, the dude, this dude, 
Sometimes I get that. This dude is totally, can you see that? Anyone else seeing this? He's holding the hand in front of the screen for, oh my God, two minutes and 43 seconds. Did anybody else see that? Somebody replies, yeah, I saw that too. I thought it was just me. <laughs> oh my God, dude, I was thinking the same thing. All right, that's enough of that. So let's have a look at this figure. Now, you know what? When I look at this figure, the first thing I immediately thought of was bulky. The next immediate and probably competing thought was he kind of reminded me like a transformer. She, she reminded me like a transformer. Even further to that, it kind of reminds me of Tarantulas from Transformers. I'm sure anybody could probably take this, not that I would condone painting over this splendid paint job that Diamond Select have put onto this figure, but based on its design, you could probably paint this over and make this look like a Tarantulas. Just kind of throwing it out there. But it does definitely feel a little bit more transformy than perhaps Jaeger, at least in my mind. The color palette is not something that I normally would gravitate towards. I almost even just, well, I did discuss that in the, pre, in the previous review of November Ajax. I even discussed the fact that I don't tend to lean more towards like the red, the beiges, and like the light, light gray colors of some of the, uh, the Jaegers. Uh, it's nothing against their design necessarily, but I, I'm a little bit more favoring like the dark grays, the blacks and the blues. So really for that, you would think that I would probably be dismissive of this figure. Well, the figure does have quite considerable merits to it. One of which, the biggest merits to it, would probably be these giant guns on the sides of its arm. It almost has like a shielding that's also been put in place there as well. So it can almost guard itself while then it's firing up or following up with a second round firing off from the other arm. It's definitely much needed firepower to the otherwise I don't dare say lackluster approach from November Ajax because really the design of the character didn't really warrant a figure then to have additional things that wasn't really in the figure or on the character in the movie. Quite the contrary here than when we look at Valor Omega. It's got some really neat design elements, more so because it does have these giant firing cannons mounted onto its forearms. I also dig the fact that it's got these huge shoulder pads. It's a bulky, substantially large Jaeger, which is somewhat ironic because it is considered more like an uh, emergency evacuation unit. So really, I would consider that something as more so something that would be a little bit slimmer, a little trimmer, and certainly not as firepowered, not as armored up for firepower. But still, this one does deliver quite nicely. A big, bulky toy. Sometimes it's nice to just get a figure out of packaging, mess around with it, mess around with it, and just enjoy the fact that a company like Diamond Select would put plastic to something and create this splendid specimen. Unfortunately, the splendid specimen does have some difficulty to stand. Primarily, it's not so much necessarily Diamond Select's fault, but it's the design of the initial Jaeger. It seems almost as if, and it's not quite the case, that the feet should be rotated the other way around. You almost feel as if the feet should be going this way, and that this is the back heel struts. It's actually quite the opposite. It goes this way. But one thing, unfortunately, is the case, is it does seem to have more length, at least it seems like it's got more length from the back than it does from the front. The front of the foot also has an angle to it that I find causes some difficulty with getting the figure to stand. Um, this also could have also been rectified, but if they had only put like a foot hinge, if they could have put a foot hinge right here, you could then have angled the back down, the front down, and then it could have supported things differently. Unfortunately though, the feet are so flat, the hinging is only really up at the top here, right in there that unfortunately the foot has to then support the figure. And because it doesn't have toe articulation or heel articulation, often at times, specifically, let me just show you right there, specifically one of the feet seems to always angle up, always on an angle, never sits fully flat, which causes some turmoil, turmoil when it comes to the figure to properly stand. I like the coloring sort of backtracking what I talked about in the other review of November Ajax. Even though I'm not a fan of this color palette, it does work particularly well with Omega. 
We didn't really spend a whole lot of time because I've been dissecting all the like mechanics of it standing. But if you like look at the head sculpt, I love the fact that it's got the bright light, although it could have probably been a little bit brighter. At the very least, they put the blue in there just to in indicate the, the light is shining through the, the visor of the helmet here, or the head of the robot. It's got some nice, subtle scratches and a little wear and tear to it. And then, of course, some of the fun aspects of looking at Jaegers is when you start seeing like little number notations, little markings and little symbols that you almost almost miss until hopefully an astute reviewer can point those out to you. You're welcome. Um, it does have, like I said, like a, a, a slight wear to it. Most of the wear you can start seeing developing right around the, the thigh area, or I guess the equivalent of what would be the thigh area, in which it probably would have been going through the trenches. It probably would have been going through to uh, save and, of course, uh, evacuate all the survivors of cities and whatnot. You can see some of the scratching and wear away areas, especially on like the lower torso. It seems more obvious on the lower half than it does on the upper half. The upper half does still have wear and tear to it, but you start seeing a little bit more of that dry brushing of silver. Start coming to play a little bit more around this area, lower past the waist than it does in the upper torso area here. Love the back section right here. I wonder what like this part was for. I noticed it just on the back of the figure. Of course, we're noticing a whole bunch of other detailing that Diamond Select have very intricately uh, carved and sculpted, I guess, in their initial clay mold before this was finally realized in plastic. But I did often wonder, looking at this, what exactly is this? Initially, I thought, could it have been a broken peg from in inside the robot? Well, that's not necessarily the case. It doesn't move. It doesn't have a hinge to it. I wonder if it's like a pulley system. It doesn't look like... If you like looked at all the things on the robot that would have practical purpose, I can't figure out what this specifically is right here. Someone who has dabbled into the world of designing of Jaegers and ro uh, robots probably could deduce what exactly that is. I would certainly want to see your credentials, sir, if that was the case. But uh, again, it's got some great sculpting, great molding there on the top. It's It's got bang for your buck, which is something that I really want to start incorporating into these reviews. When it comes to the figures themselves, is there bang for your buck? And I feel like with a lot of the Jaggers, some will vary in size, as they certainly have varied in size in the movie. But I think when it comes to it, plastic-wise, you get... a for your buck a nice big bulky robot considerably long arms as well versus like the proportions of the rest of its body but i think it one thing that makes it unique and stand out from some of the other jaggers that we've looked at before just before we wrap this up is certainly the producers yelling in my earpiece here making this whole thing up let's have a look at the possibility that make up valor omega so like the head rotates back and forth it's a tricky feat to kind of get your hand in there and move it back and forth and it is very very stiff clicking and ticking away as i'm doing that the shoulders rotate all the way around they are not necessarily on hinges if i can show you they're essentially just like rolling rotating discs and then on those is the shoulder hinge now, unfortunately, the one problem I have with the figure comes down to, again, the design of the Jaeger. These big, bulky shoulders look great on paper and look really great when you have it in, say, for example, the scenery of a movie. But it is awfully uh, problematic when it comes to... The one thing I would want to do with this robot is being able to rotate the Jaeger's arm. And unfortunately, it can't rotate. Let me just show you right past this point here. I thought if perhaps the shoulder could be brought back a little bit, but it doesn't seem like it wants to rotate. Um, I could even try to rotate it this way. It doesn't seem to want to rotate past that point. Doesn't It doesn't hit, like if it only had a secondary hinge, like a hinge at the top, a hinge at the bottom, where this could accordion itself out, just like that, enough that I could rotate the arm this way, because that's really the look that I would love to put Omega in. I guess I could do it to about there, but I'd love to be able to rotate it full tilt. Uh, it does have an, a bend in the elbow. 
has a rotation in the hands. Upper torso ball joint, once again, very, very generously created there on the figure, so you can get a wide range of motion. The legs split full out, forward and back on the legs. No limitations there whatsoever. Has a bend at the knee, um, does not rotate. However, the feet do rotate. And again, something I had mentioned before, if they only had toe articulation, or at the very least, something where the back heel could have bent, it would have certainly aided with having this stand a little bit better. Standing and posing the arms are really about the only thing that I find fault to this particular figure, despite for the fact I'm not normally too accustomed to liking red and beige on a Jaeger. It seems to work quite well for Valor Omega, which, again, you could probably customize to Tarantula. Tarantulas, but you don't really have to do that, especially to ruin the paint that's already on this existing figure. Ironically, for its size, the only shortcomings that I can think of when it comes to Valor Omega is the limitations for its posability. She does have posability where it counts, but then there's also limitations to things like rotating the arms. If only I could rotate the biceps a little bit better than the way I can right now. The big culprit really is the shoulder pads. If the shoulders could be on a dual hinge, then you could accordion them out and it would completely free up that space to rotate the arm a little bit further. Then of course, the big problem is the standing of this figure. And in final looks, you can see the figure does stand, but it stands oh so very awkwardly because it doesn't feel like it ever sits firmly planted on its feet. Dual hinges, or at the very least one hinge on, its, on each of its feet probably could have aided that a little bit more. Uh, either that, despite all that, either way, I quite like this figure. Turned out nice, turned out real nice. Coloring is not something I'm too keen on, but still, overlooking the color and looking at design standpoint only and solely, it is a really neat designed uh, Pacific Rim Jaeger. Just not crazy on the color, but that's okay. You don't always have to be crazy about the color of a figure. It's the design of the figure that counts. And I think the design of Valor Omega is really where it counts. If you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself or the previously looked at November Ajax, some good news for you, my friends, my viewers, colleagues of the interweb, you can currently find these at your local comic book store. Price point for these and the price point on what I picked these ones up at my local comic book store were $34.99. So about the same price as what you would pay for a Marvel Select figure or really many, if not all the Diamond Select figures are often released here in Canada for $34.99. What are they released for in your stores, in your areas? Let me know down below. I was like discussing what prices are on different figures in different parts of the world. So let me know down below what a figure like this would have cost you if you were to find it at your local comic book store. And also let me know what you think of the Pacific Rim Uprising figures from the folks over at Diamond Select. Anybody doing a tally check on this right now knows that I've done two figures out of a possible three-figure release. That would then lead many to believe that the next figure review that's going to be coming up onto this channel is the Kaiju Drone. Hmm, isn't that interesting? I guess you'll just have to stay tuned to find out. Make sure as well, by the way, that you hit that little subscribe button down below, and while you're also at it, hit that bell notification. I don't really know if it actually legitimately works, but if it does, it'll guarantee you that when new videos are coming onto this channel, you'll never miss out. Generally, what I usually say in favor of, instead of saying the bell notification, why not swing over to the home page? Not only can you see the channels that I feature on there, my recommended channels, but you can also see all the videos that I've posted up to this point in beautiful, splendid thumbnails. I did say splendid thumbnails. More videos will be coming soon, so stay tuned for those. As always, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.